With the MLB draft ending, it's time to resume play as the All-Star Race heats up now in June. Today's episode will feature three games. First up is a matchup between our O's and the Indians in Baltimore. Adam Putko gets the start for our birds with a 1-6 record and an ERA near 5. However, his whip is good enough being at 1.17 entering June. He also has 36 strikeouts to just 11 walks. Ahmed Rosario leads off for Cleveland in Game 1 of the series. He gets jammed putting the 1-1 into the air and Edwin Encarnacion gets under it to make the catch for the first out of the evening. This Indians team is having a great year so far hitting the ball. Coming in 13th in the AL, with a batting average of 238, and Andy Rosario has the hot bat, hitting 255 entering June. Cesar Hernandez is up next. He takes the 1 0 to left. It hooks into foul territory, but it stays in play for Ryan Mountcastle to glove it, and there's two outs as Jose Ramirez steps in. Ramirez makes contact, but just like the first two batters, he pops this ball into the air. This one to Michael Franco for the final out of the inning. Aaron Savale starts for the Indians and he has a 6-3 record in 11 starts, with the ERA on the higher side of 3 and 51 strikeouts to just 21 walks. Freddie Galvis and his 8 game hit streak leads off the game for the Birds. Savale strikes out Galvis on the slider out of the zone, so the 8 game hit streak is on hold for now. Center fielder Cedric Mullins is up next and he hits the 0-1 on the ground to second. Cesar Hernandez makes the play for the second out. Ryan Mount cancels third in the order, and he hits a sharp grounder to third, but it's a routine play and the first end with neither side able to get on base, or a hit for that matter. Fran Mill Reyes gets the first hit of the game in the second, hitting a chopper up the middle and into center to get on base with the leadoff single. Eddie Rosario wastes no time in his first at bat, jumping on the first pitch from Plutko. Santander runs back to the wall, but all he can do is look at it land in the seats for a two-run homer. It's Rosario's seventh on the year, and the Indians get on the board first. Later in the inning with one out, Ryan McMahon matches a 1-2 out to right field. It stays in the park, bouncing off the scoreboard. McMahon's trying for two, but the relay combo of Santander and Valeca gun him down as Galvis Puts the tag on for the second out. Putko ends the inning notching his first strikeout as Andres Jimenez looks at the inside changeup. Putko only gives up the two on the home run to Eddie Rosario and the Indians lead by two. Heading top three and Roberto Perez leads off of the Indians hitting a hard ball to first. Encarnacion can't field it cleanly, though the first is not in time, it's ruled a base hit at the top of the order is back up in Ahmed Rosario. He only sees one pitch here as he hits a laser into the right center gap. It gets all the way to the track as the runner scores all the way from first and Rosario has himself a RBI triple, his second on the season. Jose Ramirez takes the 0-2 curveball from Pudko out into left. Mal Castle gets on his horse and is able to make the catch. But if he gets how many outs there are, which allows a runner from third to score on the sack fly. It was hit deep enough, he's probably going to score anyway, but a mental error all the same. It's 4-0. The inning continues as Frontmill Reyes ropes this ball out into right. Once again, hits off the scoreboard, but this time, unlike McMahon, he's able to beat the throw to second for his eighth double on the season. Eddie Rosario comes up after the double and hits the 1-1 one -one in the foul territory. And we gotta show some love to the ball boy here on this snag. Get him some shine. Rosario does put the ball into play as he hits the ground ball into left. Mountcastle charges and comes up firing, but the throw is offline, giving Rosario his third RBI on the game as the run scores with Rosario thrown out, trying to get to second. That ends the inning, but it's all Indian so far. 5-0. Bottom 3 for the O's and Chan Sisko is the first base runner as he leads off with a walk. After a Chris Davis strikeout, Pat Boleka absolutely smokes this ball past third and into left and all the way to the wall. Sisko doesn't have the best wheels, but he's able to slide into third ahead of the throw safely. The single from Boleka puts runners on the corners for Freddie Galvez as lineup rolls over. 
Galvis hits the 2-2 two, two into the air to right. It's definitely deep enough to score Cisco from third, but no movement over there. And to make it worse, the throw home is up the line to first. So a base running mistake costs the run, and now it's up to Cedric Mullins to try and score Cisco from third. Mullins isn't able to get Cisco home as he hits a chopper right back to the mound. O's leave two on as they're still scoreless, heading to the fourth. The Indians are threatening to score again in the fourth, with runners on the corners and no outs for Andres Jimenez. Jimenez sends his 2-0 pitch into shallow center. Mullen runs under it and makes the catch. The throw home is perfect as Cisco puts the tag on for a double play. As a former outfitter myself, there is no better feeling than throwing out a runner trying to score. That keeps the lead at 5 and the O's need to figure out a way to get on the board. Ryan Mountcastle leads off the Oriole fourth and says, I'll break the tie myself. He hits a screamer into left. Eddie Rosario gives chase, but he's not fast enough to attempt to bring it back. It's gone. Mountcastle's third homer of the year makes it 5-1 as they begin to attempt to chip away at the lead. Tom Eshelman takes over on the mound with one out in the fifth for the O's and he's greeted by Cesar Hernandez lining this ball down the left field line. It just stays fair with a great tightrope back. Gets into the corner and it's a double for Hernandez, his sixth on the year. Framil Reyes with two outs later in the inning has a chance to bring him home and he sends the 1-0 out into right. The scoreboard has taken a beating today as the ball bounces off easily allowing Hernandez to score from second and Reyes replaces it now with two RBI doubles in the game. It's a 6-1 Indians lead as they get the run back from the O's Mountcastle home run. Freddy Galvis in the bottom of the sixth extends his history to nine games with this line drive single into right. And now he's hoping this will stir the other bats alive in the inning. Galvis then advances on a wild pitch to Mullins, who then moves him to third on a ground out to first. Which brings up Ryan Mountcastle already with a home run in the contest. Mountcastle gets a 2-1 changeup up in the zone, and he does not miss it. This one gets into the left field seats, and it's his second home run of the day. The two-run blast makes four on the year for Mountcastle and cuts the lead to 6-3 as the birds won't go away just yet. Bottom eight, and Cedric Mullins hoping to keep the inning alive with two outs. He does more than keep the inning alive, he keeps the hopes of the fans alive as the right field scoreboard breathes a sigh of relief because this ball goes over it and onto the concourse, no doubt about it. Mullins now has six home runs on the year, and the lead is just two for Cleveland, six to four. Dylan Tate comes on in the top of the ninth to try and keep the Indians lead at two. With one out, Brian McMahon smashes the 0-2 from Tate to right. Ball gets off the wall, and McMahon has his seventh double on the campaign as he beats the throw. Andres Jimenez makes sure this 2-0 doesn't have a chance of being fielded as he lines it into the left center gap. The runner on second scores, making it 7-4, and that's the final in this one, as the Indians get 14 hits and just generate more effective offense despite Theo's flashes of explosive offense. Savale gets his 7th win, Putko gets his 7th loss, and Karnachak earns his 15th save of the season. Theo's would go on to lose all 3 games in the series. For our next two games, we're going down to the farm first to take our first look at the AAA Norfolk Tide this season as they face the Durham Bulls with a focus on Jamai Jones. So far this season, in 181 at-bats, he has a 193 batting average, 3 home runs, and 18 RBIs. Jones' first at-bat with the count even at 2. He gets the string pulled here as the changeup is missed and he goes down on strikes and he's the second out of the inning. Bottom of the third and Jones is up with the runner on first and one out. He hits a hard grounder to the hot corner at third. It's not fielded cleanly and the throw is not in time. It's a single but the inning ends shortly after that as Brett Cumberland grounds out into a double play. Tides still lead however 3-1. Bottom five and Jones looking for his second hit of the game with one out and a runner on second. 
On the 3-2, Jones is way too antsy looking for a fastball, but it once again gets caught with an off-speed pitch. Instead of a second hit, it's his second K on the day. Now with the game all tied at 3 in the bottom of the 8th, Jones gets another chance, this time to lead off the inning. He gets on base for a second time tonight, this time with a walk. Perfect opportunity now with the speed to try and get into scoring position. Jones doesn't get a chance to steal and he gets stranded on first. Durham goes on to score 3 in their half of the ninth and get the 6-3 win over the tie. Our final game today puts the spotlight on a top pitcher in the Oriole minor league system, Grayson Rodriguez. Grayson's stats this season include a 1-2 record, 40 strikeouts, and an ERA of 3.63 all in 34 and two thirds innings. He's looking to have some good stuff in this game against the Binghamton Rumble Ponies. Rodriguez's day doesn't start like he's expecting, as he puts leadoff batter Carlos Cortez on first, hitting him with a changeup that looks like it just got away from him on release. Not a great start at all. He bounces back nicely, however, as the next batter, Janeshwi Fargus, grounds into a 4 to 3 double play. Grayson ends the inning on a high note, striking out Mason Williams with a slider in on the hands. In his second inning, Grayson gives up his first hit as David Thompson takes the 2-2 slider and hits it into right field for a single. With one out facing Wilfredo Tovar, Rodriguez leaves this 2-1 fastball in too good a spot and Tovar takes it too far into right and into the seats for a home run. It's Grayson's first home run allowed all year to this point in double A, and the Rumble Ponies lead 2-0. Rodriguez again bounces back, getting his second strikeout of the game. This changeup freezes Mark Vientos as it's on the outside corner, and he's not happy about it. But Grayson sure is, as he's able to limit the damage to just the two-run home. Bottom three for Grayson on the mound begins with a Martin Cervenka double as he laces the 1-1 fastball to the right center gap. It's his fourth on the season. The early theme for this start is bouncing back as once again Rodriguez does it, picking up his third strikeout, getting Cortez to look at the high change. This is what you want to see from your starter when they get into trouble. Every pitcher needs a great defense though, and Ryan McKenna shows that off here. Fargus puts this ball in the shallow center, but McKenna is able to make the fantastic sliding catch for the second out, taking a perfect route to the ball, all while covering 64 feet. The Bay Sox and Rodriguez end up keeping the Rumble Ponies off the board in the inning. In the bottom of the fourth, Grayson's in a bit of trouble with runners on first and second with one out facing Freddy Valdez. Rodriguez gets exactly what he wanted and everything he needed as his defense turns to 4-6-3, inning ending double play to keep it a one run game. After a leadoff walk in the bottom of the sixth, Rodriguez responds getting Mason Williams to look at the high changeup and that's another strikeout for Grayson Rodriguez's stat sheet. David Thompson is up next. It's a great pitch from Grayson, but Thompson's able to send it right back up the middle into center. The runner moves from first to third as Thompson's single ends the night for Rodriguez. He's replaced by Tyler Irwin. Bowie does win 6-5 as Grayson gets the no decision in this start. He went 5 in the third innings giving up 4 hits, 2 runs, both earned, 2 walks, and 4 strikeouts. How'd y'all like today's episode? I wanted to try and cover all the teams. How did I do? Leave those thoughts, feedback, and any games or players you want to see me cover going forward in this month or in general in the comments down below. I'm trying to figure out uh, how to approach the rest of the season, so give me some ideas. As always, give the video a like, and if you're new here, how about subscribing? My sub goal for the year is 500, and I'd love it if you were to help me be able to hit that goal. If you are subscribed already, thank you for subscribing, and I appreciate you supporting me. As always, you guys, you know what to do. Stay on the channel, watch some more videos, and as always, keep on shining and keep on grinding. I will see you all with the Widows franchise video next week.